Well, boys and girls, here it is. It's been a long, long time coming, but I finally found it. It's like walking through the woods and finding Bigfoot, standing there, making s'mores over a campfire. I got my very own frontier. I've been searching for one of these for probably 15 years now. The insurance company won't buy you one because they're too expensive and they're considered a deluxe wheelchair, not a regular wheelchair. Although now they do make a version of this chair that is a class 3 wheelchair, which is uh, one that the insurance will buy you, but they're still absurdly expensive, so good luck getting the approval on that one. But finally, I came across one. I got this one on eBay for a really good price. It's in really good shape. Um, doesn't have much use to it. Uh, I haven't gotten to the computer yet to check the hours on it or how many miles are on it, but it's pretty, pretty new. It is, well, I shouldn't say it's too new, it's about 10 years old, but uh, as far as the usefulness of it, it hasn't been used very much, so it is a little dirty right now because, uh, you know, as you can see, there's some mud on there and some other crud that I took it out and did a little test drive with it already to park by my house. Went, did a little mudding and threw some snow and ice and different things just to kind of give it a check it out and see how it works run and enjoy going somewhere you don't really go in a wheelchair because that's what this thing does. It goes where no wheelchair goes. This chair does have quite a few options on it which I'm going to clean up a lot of because I don't want all that stuff, uh, nor do I need it. Um, I believe it was owned by somebody who was a quadriplegic before I came across it. It has uh, the elevating leg rest, it's got the reclining back as you can see all this lovely stuff here. It's got some pretty custom seating in it. It does also have tilt on it. The only option it doesn't have was elevate, which I don't care because I don't want it. Unless the chair is going to go off road and do my hunting and camping and fishing and going where I want to go chair. So, like I said, it's got quite a bit of custom seating there for somebody who probably couldn't move around a whole lot. So. I'll be doing a lot of work to this chair, and that's kind of why I'm making this video to talk about that. <clears throat> because uh, through the years, many people have seen my chairs, and I always, my the biggest question I get is, how did you do that? I put lights on them, I put speakers on them, bigger tires, not that this thing really needs bigger tires, but I still may try and cram some bigger tires on it just to make it more capable, but. So, basically, the point of this video is to give you a brief idea of what we're gonna do here. Um, like I said, people have always asked me through the years, how do I do the stuff I do? So I figured I'd document it and make some YouTube videos for everybody to see and understand how this process works doing it uh, the way I see that it should be done. There's other people on YouTube who 
do wheelchair modifications that uh, sometimes are a little bit on the sketchy side from my point of view, but uh, to each his own. I'm going to show you how I would do things. Um, this chair in particularly uh, right now currently has uh, the dynamic shark system on it, uh, shark controller anyway, which is hooked to a DX2 computer, which is fine. It's uh, older stuff. It worked back in the day pretty well, but it's kind of outdated now, and if you needed to get parts for it or replace anything, um, you can see the computer down here behind the cover. But uh, dynamic stuff isn't really made anymore. It's considered obsolete these days in the wheelchair world, so... This chair is going to get all upgraded uh, to Arnett Electronics, which is much more widely used and accepted. So there's lots of it out there. It's a really good system. It's really programmable and customizable, and you can get parts for it all day long. So we'll be going over how to do all that, change the computer out, change all the wiring, put a new joystick on it. Um, I will be getting rid of the seat back with the reclining feature on it because I don't want that. Uh, I originally wanted to get the MPS seat that this chair would have come with if it didn't have this seat on it. Uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble coming by one of those because parts for these things are not readily available all over the place. So for right now I'm going to use, uh, I have this nice old Invicare seat over here. Um, I'm just going to use the back off of it. I'm not going to use the base of it. I'm going to put the back off of this seat onto here and get rid of all this reclining stuff, which is just extra weight and bulk that I don't need on my outdoor chair. So we'll be doing that as well. I'll also be getting rid of this elevating leg rest and putting a standard leg rest on there. Um, I don't want all that stuff on there either. This is going to be an outdoor chair, so... Um, the less things they have on it, the less stuff to go wrong with it, the better off it is. I will retain the tilt, just because that's comfortable. It's nice to sit around a campfire and kick your feet up and tilt back a little bit and relax. So, we will keep that on there. But, uh, other than that, pretty much everything else will be going. Um, we will be putting lights on it. Um, probably not going to use the... Arnet lighting system. You can get an Arnet controller that does do controls the lights for the joystick. Um, the problem with that is uh, it doesn't really have a lot of capacity to it. It only you can only put a 21 lot watt light bulb on it or light I should say, and that's not really bright enough for me. <laughs> I've been putting lights on my chairs for years. I used to put 55 watt halogen fog lights on them obviously that's a little outdated but uh, now we do led lights so we'll be putting led lights on it but the ones i use are pretty super bright so the computer controller will not work it is not powerful enough to do it so we will have to get something bigger and better and better so, I'll probably do what I do with all my chairs, and I'll just wire it right up to the battery through switches. Um, it's far easier to do, and it's really simple. A lot of people always say, oh man, that must be difficult to do. It's No, it really isn't. It's pretty easy to make a wiring harness, and all you got to do is plug the lights into one of the batteries underneath the chair, and you're good to go. So, um, some people will say, oh, that'll kill one battery, you won't kill the other battery, you'll do this, do that, and uh, that's really not true. Um, yes, when you're running them, they will pull one battery a little harder than the other, but when the batteries charge back up, they balance themselves out because of the way they charge, so you will not create an unbalanced battery situation. So we will be putting lights on it, probably at least front lights, I don't know, probably some tail lights too, just for driving at night for safety and whatnot, but definitely big, huge LED lights out in the front. Uh, I have some old ones laying around that are, I 
think they're 1200 lumens each so that'll brighten up anything other than that we'll probably I'm debating whether I want to do a custom paint job on it or not I don't know yet I'll probably leave it black for now and definitely gonna paint these back rims because this whole chair is all blacked out and then you got these kind of shiny rims it's a little weird looking to me but I would prefer those to be black so we will be blacking those out definitely eventually the chair might get a camouflage paint job for hunting but I don't know if I'm gonna go that far right now we'll see um, I gotta get a lot of other things done before I make that decision so um, we'll be trying to put different tires on it I know that much these are nice tires. They do get a lot of traction because they're low inflation tires. Um, the thing I don't care for with them, and I don't know why they do this, but they put these tires on here and they don't really have a really high weight rating. Those tires are only rated for like 105 pounds a piece, which this chair weighs 340 all by itself. And then when you add in another 300 pounds of me in it, well, that's a lot of weight. And those tires really aren't, you know, they work, but the tread isn't very deep on them either. And it's a high likelihood of puncturing them. So I usually put, for the past uh, 15 years or so, I've been using snowblower tires on my chair. Um, Carlisle Tire makes some really good ones. They make a snow hog and an X-Track, and they're really good tires. I've been running them forever on my chairs. They do really, really well. They, they're awesome off-road. They do really well in the snow, with lots of traction. So probably be putting a pair of those on there at some point. Uh, i got to just make sure they fit on there. Um, they're a little wider than those are, I believe, so might have to do a little shimming to get some space in between the frame and... The tire there to get the proper clearance so that the tire isn't rubbing the frame but that's just making some spacers to go behind the hub that's no big deal whatsoever so i have that on my current chair so that's really about it for now other than uh, in general going through it there's a couple of screws that are loose on it and making sure everything's tight and kosher and put together right and like I said, we'll remount all the electronics on it. I don't think I'm going to put the computer in the back where it is now. I think I'm going to move it. Because I don't really like it out there exposed to the elements. Um, there's no cover over that. Granted, the computers are water resistant. But uh, it's still a real... I don't know. It's just a weird place for me to think of having that thing. It's sitting way out there in the back where it's open to whatever comes its way so I'm really thinking I might actually mount the computer down underneath the chair above the motors underneath there because it's a really nice spot right above the motors between the tilt frame and the motors there's a nice gap in there big hole be a great place to put the computer be up away from water and moisture It'd be under the seat so rain won't get at it um, one other thing I definitely am going to make on this chair is underneath here, uh, see if I can get to you, get it down so you can see it a little better, but if you can look underneath the chair there where the motors are, when this chair goes through the snow, those motors collect a lot of snow. The snow builds straight up right, goes right in there and just packs in between the motors. Uh, I drove it probably through a six or eight inch deep snow in my front yard and it just packed up underneath the motors there. I did not like that. That was, I don't like all that water moisture around the motors. Uh, I mean, they're sealed, but still don't, don't want to take a chance. So probably going to make some sort of a skid plate that goes underneath there that will direct the snow and the moisture away from the motors. It'll also keep the front tires from kicking moisture up into the motors. So I'll make a whole skid cover underneath there that'll protect the motors. And then when I put the computer under there, it'll keep that dry as well. So uh, got a lot of things to do this thing. So but when it's done, it's going to be a frontier like probably nobody's ever seen before. So uh, 
Um, like I said, we're I already ordered Arnett Electronics for it, so those are on their way. This computer that's on here now, the dynamic computer, is a 90 amp controller. Um, I'm gonna put the Arnett 120 on here, the 120 amp controller, which it sounds better. I mean, that 120 is only a momentary boost of power, so it really doesn't uh, do a whole lot, but it's only a couple seconds that it'll boost up to that 120 level if you're stuck somewhere or something. It gives a boost, but it only lasts for a few seconds and then it comes back down to 90, so they're pretty much both 90 amp computers, but Arnett calls it a 120 to make it sound fancy. So Really, that's about it. We'll take it out and get some more mud on it and have some more fun with it, which I'll show a little bit of that video. I took a couple short snippets of the mud and the ruts that I made in the mud, which was pretty entertaining. Uh, this thing went through it was probably in about four inches deep of mud and it wasn't getting stuck so my current chair definitely would not have done that so this thing is gold absolute gold so we have a young Morton Jay in his natural habitat That's really about it until uh, next time which we'll start next video we'll probably start putting the uh, taking some of the stuff off of here we'll take off the back probably first start there and then start putting on this back off the Invacare chair onto here I'll get rid of all this tilting stuff and unbolt everything and get rid of all that crap we have to narrow the seat up a little bit because this thing is set up really wide for all of its uh, tilting mechanism up here it's I think the seat right now is at 22 inches wide because of all the tilt mechanism so we'll have to shrink all that up so but that's the plan for it that'll be the next video so until then uh, stay safe everybody and tune in next time